five, four, three, two, one. It's go time. Welcome to the His Advocates VIP call. But God, as I was uh, thinking about tonight's show, Lord, I just wanted to glorify you and and have the right words. Lord, as we are coming into an ever-changing world with uh, systems and structures that are building out in a very fast pace, very fast level, mechanisms to come against your people. Lord, help us to be strong. Help us to understand that we already have won. And help us to not be weak in our minds. So, Lord, just uh, guide my uh, tongue tonight. And let me just convey what you've been teaching me. And uh, we pray this in your son's name. Amen. <clears throat> All right, guys. got kind of like a one of those heart shows, but it's it's going to kind of come together for you because in the history of his advocates in my my journey, it's going to be the same for everybody in in their understanding of light and dark of the battle of um the goodness of what is going on in our in our world in our country the events um the changing policies the changing laws the uh, the fact that uh we have a such a great governmental structure but such a disturbingly um evil set of power structures powers to be people that are in very high places and that's really kind of how the enemy works he just lodges himself in between power structures and they bind themselves with an oath and they literally do this through secret societies and they control nations worlds countries like uh you wouldn't believe and it it almost would seem like it was a fictional tale like 2007 2008 i was living in this structured world where the government was good and and they are but there's it's not that it's it's there's been a compartmentalization that has happened that is moving quickly that I believe the Lord's given us a reprieve on currently uh, with the acting president that I didn't vote for um, because I'm not a party to that uh, that structure and that system. But I believe that we are fast moving towards an epic battle um, and I also believe that I'm going to be watching it, not literally in it. And I, I want to get into my thoughts in that right now because um, I want you guys to just understand the, the transitions that have happened for me personally, um, both physically and mentally. And I also want you to understand the battles, the epic battles um, that are taking place. When you start walking in a realm um that you're dealing with uh the enemy directly and you're you're taking their stuff you're taking their surety you're taking their um their ability to um show god because that's basically what satan has to do he goes before the court, the throne room of heaven read job he's constantly asking god for permission and, and to do things. He's literally going into the heavens and out of the heavens. And, and and that's really a hard concept for people to understand, especially if you're not spiritual. You know, just, you know, there's a lot of people that come here and say, hey, I want to be a, a state citizen and I, I want all the, I want to be an American. I want to have my, my, my access to the Bill of Rights. And I'm going to tell you something, there's so much, there's something that's so much better than access to the Bill of Rights. It's called God-given unalienable rights. And if your claim is to the declaration, then you are literally saying God is your king. So I want you to not take that so lightly because 
I went through the battle of whether God existed or not. I did that whole thing as a young man, and I lost. God proved his existence in a miracle. And I'm going to share a second miracle that happened to me last week. And I'm going to share an epic battle. I'm not going to give you details on the epic battle. It's personal. But I was um, on a family vacation. Four days. uh, Camp land um, by the bay, San Diego, with my trailer. Um, Backing the trailer in. And I, I had a bayfront spot, and so I don't want to park the trailer in the bay. So I have to, and it's nighttime, I'm pulling in, I have to get out and I have to take a look. So I press the e brake, the emergency brake on the floor, and I put it up into park, and it didn't go into park all the way. So when I got out and I started walking towards the back, my daughter screamed and she said, Dad, Dad, the truck's moving. And it was, it was 10 feet away from that, that trailer dipping into the water, right? So not cool not fun and uh it hold on. hey Stephen give me a heads up on Skype if we're good. So I uh I basically ran as fast as I could towards the truck. Fifteen feet, you know, sprint, three hundred pound guy. Um and I jumped in the truck and my right foot on the top of my right foot hit the side uh, step of the truck and thanks Stephen and um, I broke my foot <laughs> I flipped and broke my foot I haven't broken a bone in my body ever and I knew it was broke because of the excruciating pain and I felt where it, it where I felt the thing happen and you could feel the space in the bone meaning no longer was it a smooth straight bone there was a space and so I'm like getting ready to launch the RNN show for the Republic on Thursday evening at uh, 5:45. I have to get the thing parked. I have to put the um, the the trailer together alone because my kids weren't there to help. My daughter was there, but she's she's getting ready to take me to the hospital. She's making all these awesome suggestions to help Papa out, and I'm like Kenzie. And I'm thinking to myself, because I got two kinds of insurance. I got Teladoc and I got a major med. And the major med would have been 1000 to $2,000 to walk in anyway. And I know this type of bone can't be fixed. It just, they, they, if anything, would have to do surgery. And God, at that moment, literally put on my heart the miracle that I had when I was a kid. And I literally just got done watching some videos about the power of the name of Yeshua. Now, look. I'm going to tell you right now, you can use, and this is biblical, there's people in the Word of God that were using the name of Yeshua to heal people, but they were not of God. Okay? Now, I'm not saying they didn't have a relationship. Nobody knows the relationship between a man and God. However, guys, I'm going to tell you right now, there is epic tools that we have that we are not using on a day-to-day basis in our lives. So first off, it was about, and I, I I I had to undo my shoelaces off my shoe to take my shoe off, and I about screamed. And what was weird was I I just held my 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 right hand on my my foot, and I said, in Yeshua's name, in Jesus' name, be healed. And what was crazy was I couldn't take a step on the back of my foot, on the front of my foot, nothing, but. I must have said this at least 50 times because that's when I, on YouTube, you know, I watch the faith healers go around the streets and they find the blind, they find, you know, storms coming over a house and they walk out and they hold their hand up in Yeshua's name and the storm literally lifts over the house and goes to the other side. Um, Or they go up to a deaf guy, they put their hand on the deaf guy's ear and they say, be healed in Jesus' name. And boom, the guy can hear. This is there's there's a few guys on YouTube that share their experiences with this, and I just got done watching that stuff, um, probably a day or two earlier. So I'm like, Lord, give me faith, because that's the requirement. And remember, we've talked about this in past calls, but here's the point I'm trying to make. I had a miracle. By the next morning, 
the majority of the pain was gone and I felt maybe a hairline fracture and I was limping. By that afternoon, I was walking normally and I couldn't feel the space. And I cried. I said, thank you, Lord. I was walking. I was happy. I was functioning. And when you're the man with the trailer and the truck, you need to do a lot of work to keep the kids happy. And they're all on vacation, and you're working your fanny off, dumping the tanks, getting on. And you all know if you got a trailer what I'm talking about, getting it on and off the coach or the rig and, and getting the hoses out, cleaning it up, opening the propanes, and boom, 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 and cooking and cleaning and barbecuing, and then boom. Oh, you get to go and play for maybe an hour while the kids play the whole time. But that's, that's part of being pops. So here's the funny thing. I have a total miracle. I believe I had a miracle. I'm testimony for a miracle. I'm not just saying it to float some boats. I don't care what you guys think. I'm sharing my experience. And for me, it was one of the most powerful moments of my life, knowing I have that power with the Lord. Just, I got to have faith, and that's it. That's the requirement. He he brings the power of the Holy Spirit that dwells within you, will do your bidding. He will do what you want. It may not be instantaneously, but he will do what you want. But you've got to be operating in faith. And this is critical because we're coming to some changing times. And guys, that state citizenship, that American citizenship, that citizenship under God, the first one in the history of the world that matches the citizenship in law to the one in Old Testament Israel where God was their king. He dwelt with them in between the cherubim where they held the Ark of the Covenant. They were self-governed. We have that in law here in our country right now. But contract law, which is the highest form of law, other than God's law, it's according to man, read your constitution, nothing can abridge contract law. So when you decide to physically sign a contract with an entity, a party, you are obliged. Well, guess what? When you decide in your mind to contract through your lips, According to the word of God, you're speaking out to the principalities and powers of the world, and you're contracting. Now Satan's going before the throne room, and he's saying, hey, Kelby said it was cool. He said his wife is this. He said his kids are this. I'm not doing anything other than what he's already granted. Boom, he has you. So here's my point. <laughs> Guys, I'm not doing this power claim it crap. All I'm trying to say is the word is clear for us. The victory for freedom must come from our mindset. It must come from knowing who you are. It must from, come from having your documentation match your brain. Meaning you want to be free. Well, do you? Because if you do, you're going to live it out every single day in your words, in your mind. For example, went to a bank today, opened up an account. The lady looked at me. She said, oh, you can't cross anything out. And I looked at her, and I, I'll just say straight up. I said, today it's going to be a little bit different, and I'm going to share with you later why when I send an email to you, okay? Just you didn't see this. And All right, I'm back. So... Do me a favor, uh, Stephen, how long was I gone? 30 seconds, what? One to two minutes. Wow. Okay. I honestly don't remember where I was about a minute or two ago. So we're going to go with uh, the contracting. I'm just going to I'm going to repeat because this is this is important. I want you guys to really start getting your minds wrapped around what you're speaking, you're setting yourself up for contracts with the enemy. And you're also setting yourself up with honorable um, contracts with the Lord. And what I mean by honorable is um, contracts that will be honored, meaning you're, you're, 
you're 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 going to say something about your life in the name of Yeshua that you want for yourself, and then you're going to because of that relationship, because of the Holy Spirit, you're not going to be casting yourself into a continual place. So after this experience, when I was in San Diego and I had this healing, I had a great weekend. We went shooting on the 25th uh, for uh, on Christmas Day. We were firing off all kinds of guns. On the 26th, an issue happened. It was so profound and so big. It was um, a very destructive thing. And it was one of those very old issues that I've been dealing with for a long time in my life. And it was so hurtful and so painful that... The enemy used my family um, basically to come against me, and it wasn't. And and and, you know we're not we're not we're not split. We're not. It's nothing like that. It's just I got a 17 year old boy and I got a 16 year old girl, and and they don't like the structure sometimes in the way that we live. And I don't blame them. They want their freedom. They want their um, they want their own bedrooms. And guys, you need to understand something. I live a very specific way for a reason. I don't want a residence. I don't want these things. I didn't say I didn't want a home. Okay? And so it's very difficult to do those things and keep your contracts with the corporation honored, especially when all these realtors who are renting and buying or selling use residential rental agreements, use residential loan agreements, which I don't and I won't get a loan. I just won't. I want to be debt free. So the enemy has been do, doing everything in his power to destroy my family. And and just between you, me, and the wall, there's a history that my wife brought from her family who her father was extremely destructive. And there's personal stuff there I'm not going to talk about, but she's bringing that baggage into our family as if I'm that guy and I'm not that guy. And so trying to deal with a really good boy who's as um, as I am at his age, but he was he's way better than me, way better than I ever was at his age, and trying to deal with a woman who's afraid of discipline for the child no, at any degree, and I don't spank him, it's not what I'm talking about, you deal with a conflict and it causes an eruption. And so here we are. And so my thoughts were, okay, I literally took time off to gather my thoughts. Literally. It's been a battle. And so I've been staying in touch with my daughter. I've had a couple of dates with my daughter. Um, I stayed in touch with my, my spouse. And I literally went for a walk. Because there needs to be a centerpiece in the house that loves the Lord. And that gives his children discipline that is uninterrupted. And I want you guys to understand, because for our homes as a nation to be in order, for change to happen, we need to really understand why the kids are doing what they're doing right now. I go to the gym, guys, and I'm not speaking against homosexuality. The Word does that for me. Because I have guys out there that were in my life that were that way, and I loved on them. I did. I loved on them. But I'm really saddened for this history of the state of of the country to watch the children dressing up like women now. Guys, the little young boys dressing up like women, speaking like women. It saddens me because, and here's what you don't know, or maybe you're not thinking through. The programming that's going into your kids, the junk, the Netflix, that crap that you're not doing anything about because it's occupying your kid's time. I'm going to tell you right now, you need to step in between and stop it and go spend some time with your kids. That was my fault. I'm guilty. I've been a businessman. I have been a uh, a busy man. I have been helping more people than my own family. And that stops. So for the last two weeks, and forgive me, for any member who feels I'm not on top of my game. 
I had been paying attention to my family. And I turned back on my life in the His Advocates world and the other business structures um, that I do world yesterday. And I had been busy 6 a.m., 5 a.m., 4 a.m. again until 9 o'clock at night. And I've been giving space to my family, and I'm taking moments where I can go and and spend some time with them and make them number one in my life and show them that I care. And so I'm actually now working something out where I can rent a home. I didn't want to do this for the longest time, but I'm going to do something that's going to allow for me to still not have residence, and I'm not going to share that with you right now. But it's awesome. It will give me everything that I want, legally, lawfully, with full respect for the process. And I will walk in at home under my terms, under my agreement, with no mailbox, being 100% private. It's going to cost a lot more in a deposit. But that's what, if that's what it takes, I'm willing to do that. I'm not willing to do credit. I'm not willing to use the social. I'm not willing to have a have a residence. I want to have a regular rental agreement between a man and an owner. And that's it. I'm not going to buy in this market right now. I'm not stupid. But now look, guys, we're seriously starting to move into a new phase um, here at His Advocates. And what I'm going to talk about right now is critical because we came out with a living in the private package. And this is the most important thing that it's not it's not just a package it's the most important thing that you could do in your life is complete this package because jurisdiction is gained over the physical body by contract period by you giving your consent to certain elements, to becoming a resident, which makes you an employee after you sign the W-49 uh, agreements, you become an employee of the United States Corporation, not just the company that you're going to work for. The IRS cannot levy somebody that is not an employee of the federal government. Every single United States citizen is an employee of the federal government. So I've talked about in the past how the aspect of, of the, the word play between the United States and between America. And I actually watched a video about two weeks ago of the sovereign citizen movement and a guy who was a professor and a very intelligent guy who got on and said all these uh, people actually have these belief systems that uh, really believe that the United States is a subverted nation, meaning the, the government was subverted at some level at some time by a body of people, and that they are now um, a reduced citizen and blah, blah, blah. I'm going to tell you something. I am not a dumb guy. I have seen the factual elements of what that guy was saying to be completely false, meaning what he was saying and saying that it was false is wrong. What those people believe, not all the time, and I don't, I'm not speaking for all the sovereign citizens out there because that's not what I claim to be. I'm an American. It's that simple. Just an American. I'm not an American national because the word national is something they gave to the people in law through 8 U.S.C. 1101, A21, or A22 if you're a national of the United States. People need to understand the differences there. I don't use their words for me. If you're going to call me, just call me a man. What is my allegiance to? God. But America has the only citizenship in the world that happens to match the godly form of citizenship in the Bible. Where he is king and where we are self-governed. So for me, that's my place. That's my identity, quote-unquote. 
I am a child of God, and I want to be in the closest place physically that gives me the protections of God. And I'm going to tell you this, an American citizenship is it. And it absolutely in law for that professor that was quoting so eloquently and just speaking about the people as being insane, he's wrong. And guys, they flat out know it. And they're doing this on purpose because it's a debtor-creditor issue. Guys, you have been bought and paid for, whether you've accepted it or not, by the blood of Yeshua, Jesus the Christ. Not Jesus Christ. His last name wasn't Christ. Christ is a name for the Messiah, okay? Jesus the Messiah, okay? Yeshua, or Yah- Yahusha. In, in correct form, I'm hoping I'm correct there. I know I'm going to get a bunch of people that's going to tell me how to exactly say it. Um, it actually, uh, <clears throat> um, let me tell you where it's at. I wanted to share this with you. Um, Yahoo! Ah. I was found in the ancient Paleo Hebrew writings of the language used by the most uh, ancient prophets of Israel. The oldest form of the name of Messiah is Yahusha. Yahusha. So, but I've had healing using the name Jesus. I've had healing using the name Yeshua. And, you know, (laughs) he knows I'm talking about him. He knows I'm talking about his son. But would I not be blessing him by maybe using his name properly? I don't know. People feedback on that. I would love to get your feedback on that. But the bottom line for me, um, in in this eloquent game of wordplay that they've given us, they've set the chess table up of wordplay in our nation. Um, they made you think that there's uh, the United States is synonymous with America, and then they have this um, driving force funded by hundreds of millions of dollars, this education force funded. Um, by the federal government, uh, enforced by the alphabet soup agents, going to all the law enforcement officers, telling everybody how crazy you are for even thinking this. And saying wordplay, like, can you believe that they think they're not bound by federal law? Okay. First off, I remember in Oregon uh, two years ago a standoff. And I remember hearing the guys that were trying to pump themselves up with AR-15s, not even in uniform, they were in private clothing, saying, they are on our land. We're going to take them out. I heard it on TV. Our land? Wait a minute. Your land? No, 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 no. This isn't their land. This isn't... And that's what they believe. They want these soldiers... (laughs) Private soldiers hired to kill people, not saying all of them are bad, but they want these private soldiers to think that this is an issue of of the land being taken from them. That's the people's land, is it? Well, if you look in contract law, even though it was done in a subversive fashion, even though it was done by by color of law, by a corporate United States body, and the republic still existed, but nobody claimed to be in republic, and the republic wasn't operating, and that office is vacant since 1861 through 2010. Even though all that, we still shouldn't be having the attitude, if you're an employee of the United States, that the people that are sitting on a location, which now, after three times, and I'm proud to say, we have for the first time victory. The Bundys, Cliven, Ammon, uh, Ryan, free yesterday. All charges dropped with prejudice, mistrial. It was the third trial. The crimes, guys, that are being committed are the 50 other families that were kicked off their land in Nevada by the federal government and BLM for making contracts with them 30 years ago that they were going to do some improvements. Then they used the 
the private soldiers to kill their animals, to raid their land, to burn their fields, and arrest them. And when they were exonerated, they arrested them again and charged them again. They were exonerated in trial. They were arrested again. And this time, there was a full mistrial with prejudice. They can never be tried again. I pray the blood of Yahusha, Jesus the Christ, over that family for the rest of their lives. Because any time the federal government gets smacked in the face, or any time the powers to be get smacked in their face, they come back with retaliatory totality, generally in death. I ask our Lord to cover that family, the Bundys. They stood the fight. They stayed in the fight. They're the last family in that area. And guess who is tied to all the real estate that was taken from the other 50 families that were kicked out by the BLM? A senator by the name of Harry Reid. Strong, absolute ties. He called those families terrorists. He called them terrorists. Guys, I'm going to tell you, the terrorists for the last several years has been a few people within the federal government. As a matter of fact, the guy that killed Lavoy Finnegan is a federal FBI agent. He was charged for murder. He is still on active duty with his gun and his badge. Is there not a reality check that is going to take place? And that's what I'm praying for. And it's got to be a paradigm shift in our minds as a people. Because we are being shoved with YouTube and with Netflix and with news that we are listening to, and guess what? It's programming you to think you are defeated before you even get up. That's what it's doing. I don't watch news because I don't believe a flipping word it says. It's like wasting my time. And when I watch YouTube, I try to watch stuff that's encouraging and lifting me up and building my mind, not not ripping me off. And I used to do that. I used to watch everything that was bad for me and it'd bring a defeated feeling. How many times do you get done watching TV and you feel disgusted? You feel empty. You feel like you you don't have any power. Satan wants you to think you have zero power. He wants you to think the road is so far down, meaning he is so far down the road that you can't do a dang thing about it. And I'm going to tell you our example in Scripture is totally something different. The power of God is infinite. The power of Satan is finite. But what Satan is doing right now and, and what's changing on a fast track level, the only way to interface with the systems that are coming, with the AI, artificial intelligence systems that are coming, is going to be with a chip interface. And that's going to be the only way. The mark. The beast. What is the beast? I want you guys to really think about that. I'm not going to do that on this call. I'm going to talk about the power of the mind right now. I really want you to think about what that beast structure is. And I'm going to tell you, they've been telling us for 100 years. They've already told us what the beast structure is. And that system, that structure, that is the only way that they can do a snapshot of all the events of the world happening and and send out their little structures and their little their little messages and their little, you know, uh, memos and their emails. Don't think for a second you know, and I talked about this, um, uh, foreclosure sheriff went out. I'm like, do you have the copy of the judgment? He's like, yeah, I got the copy of the judgment. I'm like, really, is the judge's signed order? Um, you see the judge's signature on the judgment? He says, no, this is just something that comes to the computer. I'm like, you're doing an eviction with something that came to you on a machine and you didn't verify that was signed by a judge? Now, I want you to take a step back and think about what artificial intelligence can do through that kind of stuff where law enforcement's getting memos right on their machines of what to do. Go arrest this person. Go, this this is an all-points bulletin. This guy's uh, he's one of those crazy sovereigns. Go get this guy over here. He's this, this, and this. And that could be an AI machine in the background doing some predictive criminal, um, you know, uh, pre-crime kind of stuff. Remember that movie, Pre-Crime, with uh, Tom Cruise? Well, look... <laughs> Here's what I would suggest. Don't give it power. 
the AI is going to be Satan's tool, or already is, one of them. That tool has tentacles so large that it almost defeats even the billionaires in their mindset. It's scary to them because they lose controls. And the the countries are trying to build as fast as they can AI for their nations to battle other nations to ultimately control the world. It the 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 element of battles, the future battles are going to be through machines like that. Now, that machine very well could be the representation of the beast system. The mark of man. Something that man did, something that man put together that Satan uses for himself, just like CERN. CERN, I really want you guys to think about it. They've already admitted it opens up wormholes. It opens up black matter. It opens up gateways. CERN, the company that has its logo as being 666. That's, that's, go, go look at CERN's logo. It's 666. Very sneakily. And CERN has spent all this money to do these things to open up well that's in the that's in the book of revelations where they will come out of the abyss so what's happened in the last couple of years is that the increase of crime is tremendous i personally think that we have a reprieve at this nation a time in this nation and i would like to see a permanent reprieve but what i think is going to happen is you're going to have a few that are Americans, and you're going to have a many that are United States citizens, and you're going to have a few that God has absolute power and control over and can protect unequivocally, and you're going to have a bunch of U.S. citizens that are going to be bound under contract law with the enemy to be torn apart one way or another. Now, I rebuke that. I don't want that for anybody. I don't want that for this nation. But guys, look, we have a nation that is so sick. And I don't mean disgusting sick, even though there's some things that are really wrong with us. But we have a nation that is sick in in their sin. We have a people that believe certain elements and things are okay. And if I went on with all the things, I would just depress you. And I don't want to depress you. I don't want to give power to the enemy. I want you to understand something. The mind that we have, we have to capture every single thought. And that's scriptural. And that we have to hold it in the captivity. And that we can dwell on good things. And what happens when you manifest joy in your mind comes from your heart. You manifest the joy in your mind. What happens is that you start working from an element of power. And you start speaking from an element of power. And powerful things start happening in your life. Since I changed my mindset, my joy, my personal joy, my personal peace, my personal life, everything has gotten better. You're not ever going to completely get away from the attacks. There's no way. The closer that you get to taking the enemy down or harming what he does, what he has, the more... He's going to put on you, potentially. I rebuke that too. So as I move in those elements of of being in the front line, you guys need to do it yourself with your families. I'm going to ask you guys to get off the couch. And I'm going to ask you to start moving into the operations mode of thinking about ways to produce a positive result first off in your family's life. And stop dwelling on the negativity. Stop dwelling on those things that are keeping you down from total... And I'm not talking monetary success. I'm talking about personal joy. I want so much for myself to have freedom. I want for my family to enjoy the freedoms that I have. So I've given them, in law, the freedom that I have. They want something different from themselves at this point. Meaning kids... They want a driver's license, right? So what do they do? They don't want to hear 
dad talk contract law with the person at the DMV. They just want to sign away their life. Isn't that it? The kids are brought up, and we were brought up to think the driver's license was the most precious thing. Have you ever read the the contract on a driver's license? It's pretty gnarly. And so you become a political, you become politically attached to a party. You claim that you're a Republican. You claim that you're a Democrat. They're a sub um uh, corporation from the federal corporation, you're an employee of the United States. You are taken down, or you were taken down, a number of ways. So, that living in the private package, that is the most important thing that you can do. It's absolutely critical. It's going to come with a training program unlike anything that you have ever heard of in your life. And this is what we're going to talk about right now, because this is critical. That training program, which is going to start in a month, in, in February, we're going to launch the dates. Guys, we need you to know who you are. Critical in training. We need you to understand what the difference is in law of an American and a United States citizen, what, what it means to be an American. We need you guys to understand what it means to come out of her, my people. Um, Genesis 126, sovereign authority, Romans 9.13, uh, submission to your governing authority, which is God and you being self-governed. Um, we need you to get what a body politic of people is uh, versus a community of persons, um, what state lowercase is, state uppercase, literally that, digging deep into individual trainings in these matters, uh, different constitutions, understanding the wordplay in the constitutions, the, the titles of the constitutions, the capitalization, living under God. We need you guys to understand respecting your brother, living in peace, because that's how they're going to get. They can only attack you through the NDAA, through the Joint Terrorism Task Force, once you're out of their jurisdiction. And if you live under peace, there's no other way to come at you, seriously, except with a sniper. And I'm going to tell you, my buddy David, who um, had told me this story personally, has personally met um, converted Christians, ex-killers, that they were hired by the corporate United States to kill people. The guy privately told my buddy David, he said, you wouldn't believe how many times we would go with a perfected sniper rifle or a gun, and we would go to pull the trigger, and the gun would fail. We'd clear the round, we'd clear it again, we'd pull the trigger, the gun would fail. We'd take the gun the next morning to the shooting range, and the gun would fire. And it wasn't just one guy's gun, it was sometimes two and three guys' guns. That is the power that you have when you are under God's protection. Nether training, how to understand how to contract. Just like what I did today at the uh, at the bank without offending, making friends. Got exactly what I wanted. Understanding how you got here through all those adhesion contracts. We're going to talk about and break down all of them and what they say and why it's so important to get away from that. The state citizenship, what that means to to be an American. Um, we're going to understand the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, and the Bill of Rights. And we're also going to show you guys where, as a uh, U.S. citizen, you don't have access to the Bill of Rights. Uh, we're going to talk about assemblies and grand juries, uh, de jure versus de facto, meaning lawful, original versus corporate, uh, not by right, not by law. Um, so you have the original America, de jure, and you have the corporate United States, de facto. Um, we're going to show you in the law where de jure and de facto exists, Shelby versus Norton County. We're going to get down and, and we're going to break down corpus juris secundum where it talks about when a de jure grand jury exists, the, the de facto one must go away. We're going to dedicate a full day to jurisdiction. We're going to dedicate a day to court and court training. Um, we're going to talk about homeschools, vaccinations, true private stuff. Um, corp, uh, the, we're also, this is important, guys. What I have seen in the last several years um, where people are getting themselves in trouble is they're doing stupid things. They're taking bad counsel 
then they are leaning up on judges, suing federal government, and they disappear. Stop that. We're going to show you how to deal with corrupt de facto elements by privately exposing them through a private administrative process, not even suing them, but getting them either really worried where they quit or they get fired. That's important because it's creating a record that keeps them honest not going after them, their family, not headhunting them, not, not trying to take their stuff. I know that a lot of people want to take a lot of people's stuff, but guys, you ain't prepared to deal with court. Stop thinking you can deal with court and deal with the elements of, of criminal procedures in court that don't apply to you. Stop thinking you're better. This is what training has to be. We're going to have an entire weekend on creating digital currency. We're going to have... Um, uh, an understanding of private wallets, private purchases, how to have currency on your phone that has nothing to do with anything that's ever been monitored or tracked that you can buy from any store and stuff will be delivered to you. Crazy. We're going to talk about driving versus traveling. We're going we're to understand territory versus land, what that looks like literally in the law and how it ties to the zip code. We're going to talk about the zone improvement plan. We're going to talk about registration deregistration. We're going to talk about Republican form of government, what that really means, understanding those documents that came with our founders and understanding the modern republic and what they did in 2010 to bring it back together. By the way, guys, if you ever want to understand why and or what a nation is, all you got to do is read the Law of Nations. It explains that a nation is recognized as a nation when another nation says you are a nation. It is when somebody steps outside of a particular office that still is in place, and then that is dormant, like the de jure form of government, where the people step back in. We didn't even have to form a nation to go and get a territory or get a uh, an agreement with another nation, a treaty. We didn't have to do that. All we had to do was sit back in the vacated seats under Lincoln in 1861, and we did that in 2010. You need to get this wrapped around your mind, because that Republican form of government is currently being held, does exist, is legitimate, and you know so because you're not even allowed to talk about it in a the courtroom. They'll say it's a matter of national security. Why? Think about that. Because if it's found in court that it is the re-inhabited form of government on the land. That could be a case precedent. They don't want that. Very important. All we're doing, guys, we're not we're not a part of a a, a governmental uh body politic of people trying to take over the Fed. No, no, nothing to do with them. Something totally separate. I believe I love my country so much that I'm willing to, to do what it takes to bring back the Republican form of government. And we're going to hold those seats until the people come and sit in them. That's all we're doing. It's not crazy. It's very real. And I've been a part of that since the very beginning. And I'm proud to say that. Because when I found in the streets of Washington, D.C., the, the structural symbol of the Church of Satan, and I saw what they were doing to the people around the world in the deaths. We will have an account. Look, it says to those people in Babylon that sits on many waters, that is comprised of many nations and cities. Come on, guys, think. Think. It says, come out of her, my people, lest you partake in her sin. What does that mean? Judgment for you. If you don't come out of her. It's judgment. Christian, no Christian, he's saying, come out of her, my people, lest you partake in her sins. And it applies to you whether you think you're raptured already or not. Period. We're going to train on understanding the birth certificate versus the live birth, certificate of live birth. We're going to train on MSOs, what a manufacturer's statement of origin is for a car, how they trick you for registration, how they trick you for... Uh, all that stuff, land versus territory, um, that's, again, 
a critical element of what do you do in purchasing? Um, how do you purchase land in the private? What do you say in an agreement? Uh, we're gonna we're gonna have to spend an afternoon uh, talking about playing in the public side as a private man or woman. And then the final training: How do you tell your family? without sounding like an absolute lunatic. Guys, this is important stuff. This is a training module that's coming out that's a part of our Living in the Private Package. Nine or ten trainings that are going to be over the next 18 months that I believe is going to change the scope of the way that people think. We have to get away from the sovereign citizen ideology BS that's coming out from those guys. We have to let them know that mainstream people are fed up. They're fed up with the the fake news. They're fed up with the lies that uh, the United States is synonymous with America. It's not. They're fed up with being lied to, uh, being ripped off, being having their stuff stolen. The people are speaking up, and there's actually somebody in de facto leadership that's really kind of worried about that and doing something about that, in my opinion. And I'm not forming an alliance, and I'm not a party. I'm not a Republican. I'm, I, I, if anything, I don't play into the ideologies of news, conservative versus liberal. That's what they want. They want us divided. Why don't you go hug? If you're a conservative, go hug a liberal tomorrow. Instead of talking crap about them on Facebook all the time, go hug them. Go love on them. Isn't that what God would want? Think about it. How much more power would you have in their life? to control their thoughts, that liberal freak, crazy, whatever, or the conservative, that conservative, that zealot that's over the top, that, that just thinks crazy stuff. I mean, I know how you liberals work. And and I was a liberal too at one time in my life, when I, meaning liberal with my lifestyle. But I realized I have way more power over people with love. Instead of playing into everything that the AI is doing on Facebook to keep us divided. A divided nation cannot stand. I would encourage you guys to come back together and not only learn how to be in the private, but don't grow your, if you're a guy, don't grow your hair long, uh, take your license plates off your car, uh, have a license, uh, driver's license burning party and then move to the mountains and live in a tent. Don't do that, man. That's not God's call. That's not what he wants. That's not true freedom. The second you come back down to get some food, they're going to pick you up. And you're going to be in jail. And you're going to be hating. And you're going to be blaming. Instead of beating them at their own game, dealing with them on the contract level, smoking them. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I don't know if you know this, and it's it's okay. You know, that, that doesn't apply to me, and here's why. And have the skill set to do something about it and say it to them in love and not in anger and educate them so that they can dismiss. Listen, guys, I had a lady call me. She's on this call right now. I'm sure of it. She called me this week, and I lovingly rebuked her sentiments about fighting stupidity traffic ticket she'd already done 90 days they were charging her and she was going to go to prison for contempt can you believe that i wasn't about to help her defeat the judge i told her some simple things to say some simple things to get this stupidity behind her she called our prayer line the next day, that night, and she wanted to thank Stephen and myself for taking the time to speak to her because all charges were dismissed based on our helping her. And I'm going to tell you, there is words that you can use in court that are biblical that the court has to honor. I'm so here's the point. Use, use the, the these tools that we're going to give you and then get control of your mind. I am constantly rebuking things that I say 
and and taking back the words that are negative and taking back the things that my mind is hearing in the subconscious and the spirit is accepting think about that and that the enemy is able to use against me think about that that is the most important thing that i speak holy thoughts over my family that i speak holy thoughts over the his advocates members that i change the way that you guys think that you guys find it the most important thing that when you wake up that it's a good thought and it's a happy thought and stop laying in bed i'm going to tell you something there's many people that lay in bed for an extra 20 30 minutes i got it but when i'm really really tired that's the only time that i do it but if i can't sleep i realize something it takes more energy for me to stay in bed than it does for me to get out of bed, get some stuff done. And then when I actually get to the point where I go in and lay it down, be smart about your day. Get up and enjoy somebody next. Show them some love. Bless them with blessings serve them and let them look at you weird and then walk out in place guys we are in this point of major change I want you guys to get your minds wrapped around how you can defeat the enemy by controlling your minds yet paperwork straight living in the private and uh, I got your message. Can you turn that off, please. Um, I got your message, Stephen. I know that we're getting a lot of interference right now. I'm working on it, so let me just block some internet stuff just real quick because I'm going through the uh, good now. All right, thank you, buddy. So the uh, the element of of what you need to do with your paperwork, the element of what you need to how you need to participate in this training, all throughout all of that stuff, I'm going to train you on all throughout what's going to be embedded in in all of that stuff, especially in the who you are or your mind. I'm going to be I'm going to do whatever I can to take over uh, that old guy guy out of you to get that old girl out of you and put thoughts in your minds about how to how to deal with stuff how to think about who you are what to how to respond um, how to how to how to behave um because those are the things that are going to change your life you can get your paperwork dialed in and you can get your training done and if you don't get your mind right what do you got what does it mean to have all the wealth of the world if you're not happy that's the most important thing, that your relationships are good, that you're happy, that you're pump, pumbling out of bed, excited, protected. You got some food. You got some clothes, some new jeans. You're, you, thank you, Lord. Bless you. Bless you, Father, for blessing me. Every time I fill up my gas tank, thank you, Lord. I never forsake the gifts from God, small or great. Thank him for it. Why? Because you are a parent too, right? When your kid comes to you and says, Dad, thank you very much. Because my kids don't do that anymore, man. They don't come to me all the time and thank me. And I'm like, why do I bless them so much? Do you think God thinks any different? He's a God. He's our Father. He wants to bless us. And it's not all about riches it's it's about joy peace happiness love all the fruits of the spirit just so that we abound so that we're 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 jumping out of bed and the bad stuff that's happening it's like just scraping it off our shoulder no problem at all lord that's yours that's not mine you deal with that that's what i'm doing with my family lord you deal with that that's not my deal I just keep it in prayer. That's all I got. I can't I can't change hearts, change minds. I can't tell people how to behave. I can suggest, but if I don't have one house in order um under 
under a mutually agreed upon way of dealing with the kids, then we're going to have issues. So if God is not the head or if the, the husband is not the head and, and, and where the husband supports the wife and the wife supports the husband, I'm going to tell you, you have a broken system. So what's, what's the most important thing? Getting your house in order. This is where we are going to have our protections. And to all my Christian friends out there, I'm going to tell you right now, stop being a weekend Christian. Go do something that feeds the homeless, that cares for the widow, go to the prisons, and take care of the orphans. That's being a Christian. Sunday to Sunday. Hey, brother. How you doing, brother? I'll be blessed. And then they all talk about their woes and how much spiritual attack they have had. <clears throat> and it's it's funny. And I'll talk about the blessings from God. I really I hear it sometimes, but for the most part, I hear the, the woes, the trials, the this, that, and the other. Guys, I want you to get your minds wrapped around how to live your life fully, totally protected, with joy. Get your paperwork in order. Get your mind right. Get your walk right. And let it start living out in who you are. Because that cannot be touched in Yeshua's name. That's it, guys. Be blessed. I'm going to see you probably this Friday. I want to do a special call on Friday. Um, call my buddy Stephen. His phone number is toll free, 844 447 2386. His extension is 702. Again, 844-447-2386, extension 702. We will do whatever it takes to help you guys live this dream with us. We are going to take this nation back, dude. We are going to take what we need to do. And if we can't take everybody with us, we're going to take a ton of people down with us. I don't think everybody wants to come. That's okay. They can stay in the corporate territory bound by Satan all they want as the surety for the debt of the nation of the powers to be that have gone around the world killing all the people to wage war, set up central banks, and act like it's done under freedom and democracy. I don't want to be a part of that. My God is probably pretty upset at that. And the fact that we are not awake enough to figure that out and come out of her, my people, like he tells us, oh, that doesn't apply to us. I disagree respectfully. God bless. Good night. Friday is going to be a special call. Don't miss it. See you at 6 p.m. Pacific. Bye-bye.